The first Republican presidential primary debate is tomorrow night in Milwaukee. Eight presidential candidates have qualified to take the stage, although former President Donald Trump, he made the cut. He's not planning to attend. So I want to bring in CBS News political reporter Aaron Navarro. He's in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. anxiously awaiting uh, the debate. Um, so now that we know who will be participating, Aaron, what else are we learning about tomorrow's debate? How's it going to be set up? Well, good morning uh, from outside the Pfizer Forum where this debate will take place. Uh, we're learning it's two hours, and we've heard from the host that they're going to ask about former President Trump, even though he's not there. They're going to address the indictments that he's had and his presence over the party. But we're also learning that the day after the debate, Trump will be in Georgia uh, for the Fulton County for the arrest there. And from talking to Republican strategists yesterday, they acknowledged that could really take some of the oxygen out of whoever really performs well at this debate. Eric, you're there on the ground. So this is kind of a two-part question. What, is, what does it feel like there for people who are going to be paying attention to this debate with the president not being there, former president, and who are people interested in hearing from there? Yeah, so candidates have really approached this debate as the chance to introduce themselves. And um, some have kind of skirted the question on how Trump's, you know, lack of attendance impacts that. But they're looking at this as their moment to try and, you know, show themselves to other Republican voters. And I'm really going to be watching Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. For weeks, months now, his campaign has argued that this is a two-man race between him and Trump. Yet we've seen other candidates kind of cut into his poll share. If he can, you know, talk about Trump in a way that maybe doesn't alienate Trump-based voters but still looks to highlight the contrast between those two men, that's one thing I'm going to be watching. Other candidates that other strategists have told me that they're going to be keeping an eye out for is Vivek Ramaswamy. This is a political outsider that really jumped into polls since he got into this race and kind of has done it as the only millennial candidate in the race and as someone that can really um, you know, attack if he wants to. So speaking of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, he was on Fox News yesterday discussing Trump's lack of participation. I want to play uh, some of what he had to say. Everybody should debate. Everybody has a responsibility to earn people's votes. Nobody is entitled to anything in this world, less of all the Republican nomination for president. With Donald Trump not being there, I don't think it's any secret that I'm going to be probably the guy that people are going to come after. I'm I mean, I don't know about that. I, I mm. mean, because what we've been watching with DeSantis over the past several weeks mm -hmm. is his campaign kind of hurl itself into chaos. Yeah, you know, people have been fired. Been good on his side. Yeah, and he, you know, he's got any he, though he's got a lot of money. He doesn't have a lot of money he can spend right now. He's yeah. already spent a lot of it. So I'm curious about how some of the other candidates are reacting to the, the fact that you know Donald Trump's not going to be there. They won't be able to go after him. I'm thinking about somebody like a Chris Christie, whose like whole thing was, I know this guy better because I was, you know, I worked with him and he, I'm, I'm going after him. Like that's what his thing is. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Chris Christie has been a Trump critic right before he got into the race. And, you know, whenever the indictments come up, Chris Christie has been like, what are we doing here? We have a Republican front runner that has all these indictments. But I've also noticed in recent weeks, Chris Christie has gone after Ron DeSantis as well, mm. kind of acknowledging, as Trump has signaled that he is not coming to the debate, that Chris Christie could try and take out that other person. Now, as, as you mentioned, DeSantis is, you know, kind of the campaign has been a rough start, maybe, but he has been in that second slot right next to Trump. So a lot of the candidates here, which Trump gone, uh, are looking to go after DeSantis. But other candidates here, um, such as Ramaswamy and uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, they've invited Trump to come and debate. They want to. Pence on the stump often says, I've debated Trump many times just behind closed doors as Vice President. And, and Aaron, let me ask you this real quick. Just how you're on the ground, you're seeing this on the molecular level. Who do you think has the most to gain? Who has the most to lose in this debate? Yeah, I, I would say the answer for both of those is this is DeSantis. So, you know, a, a bad showing here, uh, some of his donors have told me, could be a bit more limiting than if, you know, a Nikki Haley or a Tim Scott had a bit of an okay showing. But if DeSantis can make, you know, clear that this, as he argues and his campaign argues, that this is a two-man race with him and Trump, uh, that could help him, you know, jump up in the polls or get to a ground where he feels comfortable. But uh, I would also say Ramaswamy, Chris Christie, uh, even uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, 
Pence could uh, gain here if they have a big showing. But again, uh, Trump could suck all the oxygen out of the room with a, you know, an interview with Tucker Carlson uh, mm -hmm. potentially on Wednesday, and then uh, a big, uh, you know, appearance in Georgia on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, he does have a way of uh, making making a, his presence known even when he's not present. When he's not there. Yeah. Oof, Aaron Navarro, this is going to be interesting to watch, and you will be there for it. Thank you very much.